Welcome to the Shepherd Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's a great joy to be able to bring conversations to you from within the congregation. Today's guest is someone that I'd really like for you to get to know. It is our new head elder, Jason Schillerstrom. Jason will be my guest today. And uh, the role of head elder is very important in our congregation. Our board of elders and deaconesses is a very active board. They have a tremendous amount of influence in making big decisions in the church. And the head elder leads the way for that board. And so uh, welcome to the podcast, Jason Schilderstrom. Great. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. So glad to have you today. Well, I'd like to start out with just a little bit of background on you. Um, you know, we were even remarking as staff one time about God's timing that our new head elder would be a medical professional in the midst of COVID, just how perfect that is and the knowledge and skill set that you bring. So could you just start out by telling us a little bit about what you do with your time during the day, your profession? Sure. So I'm a, uh, I'm a physician. I'm a, a psychiatrist, a uh, geriatric psychiatrist. And so uh, I'm employed by UT Health San Antonio. I'm, on, I'm a professor on the faculty there. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and so I uh, have a lot, of, a lot of different roles in the department. Um, I absolutely see patients. My big clinic day is Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, probably the average age of my patients is about 76. Okay. And it's about, about 60% women, 40% men. And um, probably about uh, two thirds of them have uh, 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 depression or anxiety or something like that. Um, a third, the other third of them have uh, 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 some sort of dementia disorder like Alzheimer's or Lewy body dementia or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do a lot of clinical care. I do a lot of um, uh, consulting with adult protective services. So I do home visits with adult protective services. Mm-hmm. I'll go out and help them, help them with their clients who are suffering from neglect or, or exploitation. Mm-hmm. Um, And then administratively and uh, education-wise, I'm also the residency training director. So we have uh, 72 residents in our in our program. It's a big program, and so we provide the psychiatric care to University Hospital, the VA, and BAMC. Okay. So yeah. So all of the psychiatric doctors in those places are people that you have trained. All of the residents. The residents. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So you have several different things that you do yeah. within your job. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, where did you grow up? What was your path toward becoming a medical professional? Sure. Um, so I'm from Dallas County. Uh, <laughs> I went to Rangers games. Good. And um, I grew up in Saxe, Saxe, Texas, which is the very northeast tip of Dallas County. Okay. Uh, used to... Uh, when I was growing up, it was population 2,500. Um, nobody would have considered it a suburb of Dallas at the time. It was just too far out there. Right. Um, so yeah, so we had uh, uh, steers and sheep and chickens and really? all that kinds of stuff. Cool. And it was fun. It was good. Yeah. Um, so that's where I grew up. Uh, and uh, uh went to high school. Uh, if you grew up in Saxe, then uh, you got bussed into Garland schools. Okay. So I went to Garland schools. And um, from there, I went to the University of Texas, UT Austin. And um, my degree from there is zoology. I have a Bachelor of Science in zoology. And uh, that really, really think it just, it just stems uh, from that time and and to this day just my love of creation i just love uh i just love all of creation i just wanted to learn how how everything worked Uh and um and so so when i was in college i guess when i was in college then uh, i went to college uh i guess with the idea that i would um i had an idea that that i might be if want to be a doctor i had that idea um, but I guess the, uh, the, uh, uh, what sealed it was my job in college. So when I was in, when I was in college, I worked for, uh, United Cerebral Palsy and, um, and my job was caring for a, uh, four-year-old boy. So I cared for a four-year-old child, 
uh, with mm. um, just really profound cerebral palsy. And so I cared for him till he died, actually. He was six, he was, uh, six years old mm. uh, when he passed away. And yeah, and it was just through that experience, through uh, working with uh, this child, working with this uh, beautiful family, um, uh, uh, just through those experiences that uh, made me know that I wanted to go into medicine. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Sounds like a very powerful experience. Yeah. 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 For for a twenty year old kid, it, it was. Yeah. Uh, I. Uh, I, I definitely bit off more than I could chew at yeah. the age of 19. Yeah. But, um, but oh my gosh, what a, uh, what a life changer, really. Yeah. So, yeah. So what was the journey from that point forward? So I uh, went through college and then I graduated. So graduated from UT Austin and then went to medical school here. And so I um, so, uh, came, came to San Antonio for medical school. My wife and I, Tracy, uh, we met in, uh, at UT Austin. We met at, um, an organic chemistry lab. Uh, uh, ah, good chemistry. Good, that's right. That's right. exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. And so we met in organic chemistry lab and, um, and so, uh, Tracy was a year behind me. And so, uh, so I, I came here for medical school, uh, to be uh, close to Austin yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then, uh, uh, so that led me to medical school here. Um, the next year, then Tracy came to medical school here. My wife, Tracy, she's also a physician. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so went through medical school here and then, uh, along the way decided that, uh, psychiatry is really what I wanted to do. And, um, I just love the, I love working with the patients. I love, uh, working with the families. Um, I really like the emphasis in psychiatry is quality of life. Okay. It's improving the quality of people's lives. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, did my psychiatry residency here, did geriatric psychiatry fellowship here, and then I've been on the faculty since 2005. Okay. So, yeah. And you, you, you brought in Tracy. Now, Tracy also psychiatry? Yes, we're almost mirror images of each other. Yeah. <laughs> so she uh, she went to UT Austin. Uh, she's actually from San Antonio. So oh, she's okay. she's born and raised in San Antonio. Went to Clark High School. Oh, and uh, yeah, and then so we met at UT Austin, and then um, she matched here for medical school. She went into psychiatry, and then at the very end of training, we diverged. Um, I went into geriatrics and she went into child psychiatry. Uh -huh. So Tracy's a, Tracy's a child psychiatrist. She does um, uh, a lot of her clinic work at Clarity here in town, Clarity Child Guidance Center. Mm -hmm. And then she's also the lead psychiatrist for UTSA. Hmm. And so all of the their student uh, counseling center, so UTSA has 36,000 uh, students. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, my residents under her supervision provide all the psychiatric care to to UTSA. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So so you guys have uh, have an influence on what's happening in our city in terms of the, the psychiatric <laughs> care. We, uh, we definitely have a role. <laughs> we have a role. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, tell me a little more about your work. You know, you talked a little bit about the things you enjoy. What do you enjoy the most? What's the most challenging for you? Mm -hmm. Any uh, interesting cases that you can share with us? Memorable sure. cases? Sure. Um, well, let's see. So, uh, I mean, the hard part of the job, um, easily, the, the hardest part of the job, um, easily, is suicide. I mean, that's, that's easily um, the most difficult thing that I have to work through clinically, and, and personally, right? Now, when you say suicide, are you talking about the geriatric patients or are you talking about they're dealing with somebody in their family who committed suicide? Uh, the actual patient. The patient, is yeah. that common among seniors? Um, it's not common, okay. but it's more, it's more common among seniors than it is for younger adults. Really? Yeah, so yeah. the older, 
uh, the older one gets, the more likely one is to complete suicide. And, um, and that, I mean, honestly speaking, that's because of the, the methods that are used. And so, um, yeah. So, so when an older, when an elder decides to kill themselves, they almost always use a gun. Really? Yeah. And so when younger people are struggling with this, um, it's more likely to be other, other means that have, a. um, that can have better outcomes. And so, so that's easily the hardest, uh, the hardest part of the job, yeah. hands down. I mean, hands down, yeah. that is. That's a very heavy topic, but yeah. I wanna stay on it just for a minute. So how do you protect yourself emotionally? How do you, how do you recover emotionally after yeah. dealing with those situations? Um, well, um, uh, I'm really lucky because I have Tracy and my wife. And so there's just no one who could uh, empathize and understand like she, like she, uh, uh, like she does. Right. And so she's a psychiatrist. She understands. So, you know, being able to uh, talk through challenging cases um, and being able to talk through interesting cases, being able to share that, uh, um, being able to share that with a professional, Tracy's absolutely a professional, mm-hmm. um, is just a, uh, an enormous blessing, I think, for the both of us. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so sometimes people will say, oh, you know, two doctors or two psychiatrists, um, all you do, all you can do is talk about work. Well, I promise you, we have a whole lot to talk about other than work, but nonetheless, um, being able to talk about work is actually um, very protective, I think, for both of us. So you guys can process it together in healthy ways. Yeah. 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 And you you mentioned sometimes you'll share different cases you've been working on with each other. Can you tell us any memorable cases that you've worked on? So, uh, yeah, so the other... um, the other, uh, I mean, most of my job is fabulous. You know, it's just, it's, it's amazing to be able to, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing to be able to work with elders. It's incredibly, um, I love working with families. So if anybody was to, you know, look in the clinic room with me, you know, they would see the, the, the elder who might be a patient, they'll see their spouse, uh, there's probably one or two adult children in the room. There's a grandchild running around outside. So, um, so it's a very, uh, what I like is that it's a very family focused clinic. It really is. Okay. And I just, I love that. I love working with families. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And it's also just incredibly humbling. I mean, it's amazingly humbling. Um, cause I can be, you know, uh, speaking honestly with my pastor, I can be a little, uh, you know, a little cocky, a little arrogant. I can sometimes I can get a little full of myself, and um, but my patients always put me in their place, in the right place, and, and I really love that. I love yeah. that. Um, yeah. I need that, and um, yeah. So I had, I guess, you know, I had one patient who um, had two careers. He was actually a, a minor league baseball pitcher for. For several years. And then uh, I guess, you know, in his late 20s or early 30s, he uh, became an engineer. And uh, so he became an engineer and his job, um, his job was uh, developing and designing and developing the cooling system for the lunar landing module. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Which I just think is amazing i mean that's just amazing my dad was an engineer so my dad was an engineer he worked for rockwell big engineering firm Uh um uh, designed the space shuttle and does defense so i kind of anyway so i was just like wow this man helped design the lunar landing module and he would tell me that he would you know be when they're shipping the lunar landing module down to cape canaveral he's making sure that you know nothing gets knocked off or whatever and you know he's kind of helping with that process and and i was talking with him about this and i told him just how amazing what an what an what an incredible 
job that is what an incredible career yeah and he said yeah he said you know the thing the thing i am most proud of in my life is that my fingerprints have been to the moon oh it meant me and i thought that's just the most beautiful <laughs> the, the most beautiful accomplishment right his fingerprints have been to the moon Wow. And uh, it just always stuck with me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 several years ago, I had to give the the commencement address for the medical school graduation, and um, and I brought that story up at graduation, and I told those medical those graduating medical students that my patients' fingerprints have been to the moon, and I look forward to seeing where their fingerprints go. Oh, so, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, that's great. So, yeah, yeah. So the man whose beautiful. fingerprints have been to the moon have also been in your office. <laughs> that's right. They've right? been in my Same office. Same fingerprints. <laughs> exactly. Wow, that's really great. It is. Yeah, it I look is. forward to seeing where your fingerprints will be. Yeah. I might have to borrow that for a sermon. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. <laughs> absolutely. That's absolutely. really good. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah. Now, uh, do, we've already talked about Tracy, your wife, and mm -hmm. what she does, where you guys met. Uh, let's talk a little more about your family. Sure. And one of the things we have in common is we both have four children. We both so have four children. <laughs> feel like we're, we're in that club together. That's right. Uh, but yeah, if you tell us about your children, please. Yeah, we have reached the capacity of our cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, it. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, so I have four children. Uh, uh, Megan is 19 and she's a freshman at, or she, I guess now they've all been promoted. So uh, yeah. Megan is 19 and she's a sophomore at Trinity. She goes to college here in town. Mm -hmm. She goes to Trinity. And uh, Kevin is 16 and he goes, he's a, he's a, um, he'll be a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. And so he uh, goes to Clark High School. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, my youngest daughter is Ellie and she, she'll be in the seventh grade right here at Shepherd. Mm -hmm. And then my youngest son is Austin, uh, so he's 10, and he'll be in the fifth grade right here at Shepherd. Okay. And so, so Megan, Kevin, Megan and Kevin did uh, middle school. Both of them did their middle school here at Shepherd. That's right. And then um, Austin will have done everything from, oh gosh, I mean, daycare all the way through middle school. Uh -huh. And then Ellie came uh, in early elementary. So she, she, I believe she came here in like the second grade. Okay. And she'll have done second grade through middle school here at, here at Shepherd. So. And Ellie's known for her great three-point shot. <laughs> <laughs> she's, a, she's a basketball player. She yeah. absolutely is. Ellie and Kevin, my two middle kids. Yeah, that's right. Are definitely the basketball players. Yeah. And it's, it's fun. There's just so much... Um, just so much joy. I, any parent, I think, can relate to just how much joy there is in watching your kids play. Right. I just love watching them play. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you talked about, you know, all your kids have gone through Shepherd of the Hill School mm -hmm. at some point. Can you tell us a story of how you guys ended up at Shepherd of the Hills? Sure. So, um, yeah, so uh, uh, let's see. Well, so it was. It started with Megan. So Megan was. Um, she went through a, a public um, elementary school uh, here in Northside Independent School District, and Tracy and I are very supportive of uh, public education. Uh, God bless every one of those teachers, all those administrators. Um, Megan did really well through elementary school. She did great. Um, but when she transitioned to middle school, it was just, it was harder. It was just harder. It was, um, her grades were wonderful. She's really smart. Um, she's smarter than me. She lets me know that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, so academically, she was doing fabulous, but it just wasn't the right social situation. You know, it just wasn't, um, it was, it was a little tougher, you know, it was a little tougher. Um, it just wasn't, uh, it just wasn't working out for her socially. Um, so, you know, so we uh, stuck with it. Uh, we did our best. I thought she had fabulous teachers. I thought she had a fabulous principal. 
the administration, the teachers, everybody was great. But it just, it became pretty clear after a semester that it just wasn't, uh, it didn't have to be that hard okay. for her personally and socially. And so, um, yeah, so my wife, so Tracy, she started looking around. Um, we live really close to Shepherd. We That's live right. like a mile away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we pass by Shepherd every Every day on our way to work, every day between our house, we go right by Shepherd on our way to the medical school. And, um, and so Tracy came into Shepherd, and the first person to greet her was Ashley. <laughs> so hey, it was your wife. <laughs> my wife, that's right. And Ashley was just so welcoming and kind and... Um, just really uh, connected with Megan, with our daughter, and mm -hmm. with Tracy. And um, the tour was wonderful. We loved the energy. Um, we loved the energy. We loved the size of the school. Um, we loved the uniforms. <laughs> um, we just loved everything. About, they, Tracy and Megan, they loved everything about it. They, they loved everything about it. And mm -hmm. And so then Tracy came home and told me that she knew exactly where she wanted Megan to go to school. Cool. And yeah, and so it started it started with Ashley. That's how it started. It started wow. it started with Ashley. And wow. so that's how we that's how we came to Shepherd. And then yeah, and then we let Kevin um, we let Kevin finish up elementary school where he was. Um, and then he came in he transitioned into um, middle school here and then um and then the other two followed <laughs> and yeah. it was it was as easy as that great yeah. and for those who don't know my wife ashley was our admissions director at the school for mm -hmm. four years that was before our third child was born so i'm going to go home and thank her and congratulate her because <laughs> uh, she she was a part of bringing you guys in so oh absolutely it's been a blessing absolutely she was she was the one all right and i'm going to go tell her about all that absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. and then uh, so being a part of the school you, then you guys became familiar with the church and ended mm -hmm. up becoming members of the church yeah that's exactly right i mean what happened is um uh you know, we would go to um, the, the, I just think the school and the church um, through everybody, certainly through Pastor B, um, there's a lot of, um, uh, I mean, this sounds obvious, of course, but there's a lot of uh, cross pollination, I guess, right? And so there'd be, um, you know, Christmas pageants and there'd be uh, the choir, the choir would be singing on certain Sundays. Mm -hmm. um, There'd be, uh, so we would be kind of coming and, you know, and we were here and, and, um, and, uh, and it just, it just grew from there. And then, and then what happened was it was important. Um, it was important for, uh, Tracy and I to have our children baptized. And so Megan was already baptized, but, um, but Kevin, uh, Ellie and Austin hadn't yet been, uh, baptized. Uh -huh. And so, um, so there's a big school baptism that's done. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, so pa Pastor B baptized the three uh -huh. of them at the school baptism. And then there was, uh, communion classes. It's important for Tracy and I that, uh, 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 that our kids take communion. And so, um, so we went to the communion classes and, mm -hmm. And it's like we just um, and bef and before you knew it, we we felt like members, yeah. and and it felt like we'd been members for a little while, but um, but we weren't yet members. <laughs> and so um, so then it was so then there's a membership class, right? And yeah. so we went to the membership class, met Mickey, yeah. um, and uh, one of our. Uh, uh, wonderful deaconesses now. Yeah. And um, so uh, Mickey and Tracy and I, we were in the same membership class together That's right. uh, uh, with Alice, I believe. Yeah. And then it just, and then we were members and here we are. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It's been a great journey of a progression mm -hmm. from school family to church family. You were invited to serve on the board of elders not all that long ago. <laughs> right. And then you were invited uh, to take on the position of head elder and uh, i'm so grateful that 
uh, you are willing to serve in that way. And, and already, you know, there's been a lot happening, a lot of important decisions to be made, you know, almost a week to week thing with COVID right now. So we have sure. to stay on our toes. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you a question, something along the lines of what's your vision as head elder, but it's kind of hard to have a vision right now when things are changing so much. But uh, I'll go ahead and pose the question anyway is, you know, what are your hopes and dreams? What do you hope to contribute from that position? Yeah, so, um, right. So right now the vision is for COVID to go away and for, <laughs> and for, um, for a, a campus to uh, uh, reopen and to move forward and to, to, to grow the ministry. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's the vision. I think, um, I think also though that um, I'm, I'm, um, I'm just so lucky to have the, uh, the elders and deaconesses uh, that we have, mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, that I'm just blessed to work with. And mm -hmm. so um, we have an incredibly talented, passionate, faithful, motivated um, group. Mm -hmm. And, and so, um, so really, apart from dealing with COVID, my real job, it seems, is to um, not get in the way of that energy. Uh, okay. <laughs> right? It's to not get in the way of that energy. And to, uh, uh, to facilitate that and to empower our board, to empower uh, every one of our deaconesses, every one of our elders to, um, uh, uh, to, uh, to follow their passion, to connect with the congregation, and to, and to grow the church. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> well, uh, it's already been a joy working together in this way and looking forward to the years of service ahead. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just looking at um, the way things are right now, what are some of the effects that you have seen of COVID that touch your life in terms of how it's affected your work, your family, the church? Because you're someone who's very much in touch with the statistics, the trends. What yeah. are some of the ways that it has affected the things that are a part of your life? Yeah, it's affected me uh, profoundly. Um, I have two residents, two of my doctors have tested positive. Really? Yeah. Um, last Friday, one of my residents, her father passed away from COVID. Really? Mm -hmm. So working with her and helping her and supporting her. Um, yeah, so it's just uh, kind of day to day. It's um, It's just all... Uh, it kind of becomes all consuming after a while. My residents, you know, my residents, you know, we're psychiatrists, right? We're a psychiatrist. And, um, but my, my residents are being uh, cross deployed at University Hospital and the VA to the palliative medicine services. Mm -hmm. So it's my residents that are calling families where the families can't come visit the patient in the yeah. intensive care units. You know, it's my residents that are talking with families about, um, end of life issues, end of life concerns, end of life choices. It's my residents that are updating those families on the, the medical progression or regression of their loved ones. Yeah, um, yeah it's just, uh, oh, I'm just so proud of them. So, um, so yeah, it's affected me um, uh, just tremendously day, day by day. Yeah. Um, I think what's also true is that it's um, uh, it's helping me grow in my. You know, I don't know if this is right to say, but not, it's helping me grow in my faith. Mm -hmm. um, it it becomes so clear that um, the doctors, the nurses, the techs, the hospitals um, are critical to fighting COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also so clear that they can only do so much. Mm -hmm. You know, they can give fluids, they can, um, they can put people on oxygen uh, through ventilation or otherwise, they can ensure nutrition, but um, they can provide supportive care. But, uh, but they can't get rid of the virus. <laughs> 
I can't. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the only way this virus is going to be uh, defeated, I believe, is through, uh, through the miracle of Jesus, through the miracle of God. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be our faith in Jesus, our faith in God, our faith in the Holy Spirit that um, ultimately rids us of this virus, rids our bodies of this virus, um, allows our bodies to fight it, to heal. Um, that's the only way. Yeah. And, and that's true with so many viruses. So I am, I am praying for the day that our scientists um, develop a vaccine. And I will be first in line for that vaccine, <laughs> or I'll be in hell. I'll be in line for that vaccine. Yeah. Um, and thank, I mean, uh, thank Jesus Christ for those scientists and their minds and their 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 intellect and their 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 dedication uh, to their craft. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I also just truly believe, with all of my heart, that uh, uh, that that faith is what saves. And um, and so while I think, uh, so we absolutely need to be wise, we need to wear masks, we need to wash hands, we need to uh, respect social distancing, mm -hmm. we also need to pray, uh, we need to worship, we need to uh, sing joyously, uh, we, we, we need to uh, retain our hope, retain our belief, retain our faith uh, that, uh, that God and Jesus will show us the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, we could probably go for at length on that topic there of the intersection of the science and the faith. Uh, but, but you really see faith as being a key component in the virus uh, being eliminated at some point. I, I, I see it as the, the key component. Really? And again, I think this is true for so many viruses. Um, any, any infectious disease doctor will tell you about the limitations of medicine. Yeah. Any physician, period, will tell you about the limitation of medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, the trauma surgeon, the trauma surgeon who has, um, uh, you know, EMS brings the patient to the ER, the trauma surgeon goes to the patient, the trauma surgeon says, that they are going to do everything that they can do to piece this person's body back together. But ultimately, it's in God's hands. Mm -hmm. And what's true for the surgeon is true for the psychiatrist is true for infectious disease. Mm. You know, ultimately, I believe ultimately it's in God's hands. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's great to hear that. A lot of times people want to make a separation between the world of science and the world of faith. And, um, you know, science is the exploration of God's world. That's right. Right. The two go together. It's creation that brought me to this. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we've talked about some serious topics. Uh, close on a, a lighter note. What do you do for fun? Yeah. Um, well, mostly I chase four kids around. <laughs> and, and that's fun, right? <laughs> that's fun. And... Um, so my kids that are active in sports, I love going to their sports. I coached, uh, I did coach Megan, but I coached uh, mostly uh, Ellie and Kevin all through their through elementary basketball and all of that stuff. Yeah. Now I get to pass them off to middle school and high school coaches and 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 be a proud parent in the stands. So uh, so so we do a lot of that. Um, Tracy and I love live music. We love live music. Um, we go to uh, Flores Country Store and Green Hall wow. and Sam's Burger Joint and uh, Luke and Bob, you know, all, all these Texas music venues, really? um, every chance we get. Um, and so we love, uh, 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 we don't have to hire a center anymore. Now we just have Megan and Kevin stay home and watch the kids. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but we love getting out and going out and doing all that kind of, all that fun stuff. Yeah. And yeah. you listen to the music. Do you guys dance? I, I, I don't know if it's dancing. 
I nod my head up and down. <laughs> That's good. And, and my knees sometimes will buckle back and forth. <laughs> and, if, and if that counts as dancing, then yes. Um, we, uh, both Tracy and I, both at Green Hall and at Flores, we, we know who the real dancers are, and they're not us. <laughs> yeah. You guys are listening and enjoying. We are right? listening and enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's just uh, uh, next to being in church on Sunday, um, uh, being at Florida's Country Store, outdoors, beautiful Texas summer night, living, listening to live music, yeah. uh, is about as close to heaven as it gets. Right. <laughs> so, that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it sounds like it's a, a good season in life in that regard to be able to go and do those things as a couple. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for the whole conversation, everything we've talked about. We covered a lot of territory and uh, I hope that this will be a good introduction for the congregation, those who don't know you as well yet, to become familiar with you. And uh, once again, thank you for your service to our congregation, and thank you for your time with this interview today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been uh, so much fun, and thanks to Melody for great camera work. So thank you both. I really, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks. And thank you all for watching. Uh, please continue to keep up with the podcast. Uh, we have uh, an opportunity to share with you people like Jason in the congregation, and you can see uh, some of the people who are behind the scenes making things happen and, and uh, not only making decisions, but also lifting you up in prayer. That's a big part of what the elders and deaconesses do. And so until next time, thank you again for watching. The Lord's blessings to you.